So for our next guest, a simple introduction from me won't do. It takes something way more personal, uh, which is why we are now going to welcome Rima Faki. Give her a warm Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, Sweden. Um, my name is Rima Faki Slaibi. I was born in war-torn Lebanon. I spent most of my life hiding underground during the shelling. While hiding and hoping just to stay alive, I could have never imagined that I'd be up here today in front of all of you great people. As former Miss USA, I was the first Arab, the first immigrant, the first Lebanese and the first Muslim to be crowned Miss USA. Thank you. The reason, the real reason why this is special to me is because I, say, I share the same similar struggle and similar story as my husband, Sal. My husband, Sal, asked me to introduce him today. And it was really a very special moment for me. However, he made me promise not to say any bad jokes. However, he also never said no funny stories. So <laughs> I want to tell you how I met Sal. We share a mutual friend, Puff Daddy, and it was his birthday. It was a pajama party. So I showed up at the birthday without pajamas. My mother always told me, you never wear your pajamas in public. So here I am at the party, filled with celebrities in pajamas. I felt really awkward. So I looked over to my right, and I see uh, another person with no pajamas. So I'm like, I'm going to go hide next to him. I walked over to this person, and I said, where's your pajamas? And he said, I don't own any. I sleep naked. <laughs> I said, hi, I'm Rima. <laughs> this person was so amazingly <laughs> honest. He's also the CEO of EXO Records, home of the weekend. He's the CEO. <laughs> He's the CEO and founder of Sal and Co. He's been recognized three years in a row on Billboard magazine, ladies and gentlemen. My husband, Sal. I got my clothes on. I'm not naked. I got it. I, thank you, baby. <laughs> um, hey, everybody. Come over here. Thank you, baby. So happy you got to say a couple words about me. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Um, <laughs> um, Brilliant Mind. The name of the event says it all. The name. I mean, thank you to Daniel Eck and my brother Ash and Natalia for really bringing special people together. I mean, I feel special to be speaking here tonight, um, even on the same conference as our President uh, Barack Obama. I mean, this is great, guys. Um, my name is Wasim Joseph Slaibe. A lot of you know me as Sal. Sal is actually my a nickname of Ahmed Belshi, my, my best friend, my best man at my wedding. He gave me that nickname. He said, see, Sal stands serious for about, li about life. He said, I want you to get in the music business. I want you to help me manage my career. That was about 20 years ago, and I knew so little about the music. I've always loved music, but never thought I'd be in the music business. He convinced me. He saw it in me. He said, just be yourself. You figure out. I was like, okay, fuck it. Let's do it. And um, let me tell you, um, I'll take you along the journey as we go, but um, for me, 20 years ago did not look like today. I can tell you that for sure. Um, see, Belly is Muslim, Palestinian, I'm Lebanese Christian, and where we come from, politically, we're not supposed to be on the same side. So look where we are now, you know? Today's topic I chose is we make our own change. <clears throat> um, I'm going to take you back to my childhood, before even the music, before this journey at all. I want to take you to, I was born in 1979 in Lebanon during the Civil War. Civil War started in 1975, and uh, war is not good, not good at all. It's dangerous, very dangerous. Let me tell you, I, grew, I, I was a 
child that was born into the war. That's all I knew. I didn't know anything different. Uh, I love the other day how a lot of people got up here and talked about how their parents immigrated, how their parents... I lived that. I'm going to tell my kids one day this, so I'm blessed to be telling you this today. Um, I grew up watching my father, um, him and my uncles, my cousins get in the truck and they're driving, we're cheering for them like going for a basketball game. They were going to fight for bread. Eating was all we, uh, surviving was the mission, nothing more than that. So how I look now is like, never thought I'd look this way, I'd be where I am. So I'm gonna keep taking you to those old moments to tell you why I chose this topic, we make our own change. Um, my father died at, uh, I was 10 and everything changed. Um, my father never took for, for an answer. He even got married to my mom where my grandparents didn't accept. No, they still ran away together for the sake of love. And um, he was 39 when he died, I'm 39 today. So I feel really blessed to be telling his story and mine. Um, at that moment, 11, I was 11, 12, work kept getting worse. Um, hiding on the ground was, was just terrifying, you know, like, um, see, I see it on the news, I see it sometimes. I lived it, I lived those moments where you see blood, uh, blood dust, the sound of the bombs, where someone is one foot away from you and you see, they're screaming in your face but you can't even hear them. I lived that moment, it's terrifying. Let me tell you, when I'm in the room with all my friends or random people I'm talking and they mention the word war or give their opinion, I shut them up right away. I say, you, did you live in the war? No, well shut up, it's not. You can't talk about war. That's why today in 2019 with all the education and all the knowledge we have, it's ridiculous that we still have wars in different countries. I wanna see someone that lived in it to stop making decisions because trust me, when you live that moment, you'll know what the, the right decision is. So here I am, 15 years old, living underground, hating life, hating war, just wanna, wanna just escape. So I'm convincing my mom every day, I gotta leave. My mom's like, yeah, sure. No, I gotta leave. My mom thinking by next day, I'll forget about it. She actually helped me escape. Matter of fact, my mom is with us today. She got her visa yesterday. And um, I think what makes it even more special is her birthday. You believe that? So, happy birthday, mom. <laughs> Everybody, let's say happy birthday, mom. <laughs> um, um, see, my mom doesn't know. She gave me my first record deal, but she doesn't even know yet. Trust me. <laughs> um, I love you, mom. You're my hero. You're my everything. I mean, I have two kids now and one baby on the way. And I don't know if I'll be able to do it my, to my kids and let them go at 15. Um, when I said bye to my mom, at that time, there's no internet, nothing. We said bye, but it felt like we don't know if we're ever gonna see each other again. Like it was goodbye, like your, your bones are shaking. It wasn't like goodbye, yeah, I'll FaceTime you. No, 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 it was like, I might never see her again. She might never see me again. That's the feeling that I felt kept building that successful person that I am today. Because I feel like success is you gotta be ready to face any issues. That is success, today's date. So here I am alone in Canada. Before I got to Canada, I've always told my friends a story where me and my mom always feel special. See, I left Port of Lebanon during the war and uh, there was two boats. Till now, we always wonder if the other bo boat ever made it. And the type of boat we're on, it was, uh, wasn't like, hey, can I get a cheese sandwich and a tomato soup? No. I was holding with a ribbon, bags, one bag between my leg, and uh, the first like 40 minutes or an hour, we were literally cruising with no lights. And then we got to Cyprus, thank God. And then from Cyprus, Canada adopted me. I love you, Canada. Canada is my home. My, I mean, I learned my English there. I, I, I met my, 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 my brothers who's with me today. And that's why I'm here today is I wanna tell the story that's a bit different. Um, so here I am, Canada, made it there, thank God. When I entered Canada, you know, when I got that stamp, I just kept taking a couple steps at customs and just looking back like, okay, nobody's following me, okay. Keep taking a couple steps, looking back like this way, right? Yeah, that's it, freedom. I was ready to sleep on the floor, no bombs. You could be yourself, you could live, you could survive, you could dream, because we didn't dream, we didn't know what dreaming is. Um, I felt I was ready for the world. You should have seen me at age 15, 16, 17. No, didn't exist in my life. Like, people used to introduce me now, they'd be like, meet Sal, he doesn't know what no means. 
And I think that's why. When I tell you stories like this, it's just to tell you that that's what made me, what made us who we are. And I'll keep saying us and we because I am us. And, and you're going to keep hearing the story as it goes. But um, here I am, you know, 16, 15 years old, minor. Enrolled myself in high school to college, get my social security number, get an apartment. All that I'm telling you, it's easy. But when I was 15, minor, it's so hard. I had to figure out a way, finagle my way in. I had to figure out. I had to figure out life on my own. A couple years after I entered Canada, I met my brothers who's with me here today. I love you guys. I'm, I, can't even, I, I wouldn't do this if you weren't here with me. So um, I met my friends and my brothers, my partners, my clients, whatever you want to call it. Well, here we are making music after Bali convinced me to make music. Um, we started an apartment 310. Please remember 310. I'll tell you why later on. It's very important. <sighs> 310 wasn't enough seat, but we had enough room on the floor. We just start making music, selling mixtapes, figuring it out. We know nothing about the music, but we had our heart, our passion, and we just want to do this. Um, but you remember the TV box? Yeah, you remember it, because you, you mentioned it a lot in your songs. I mean, that TV box, the first thing we ever purchased was a TV after like six months, and then we're like, this looks perfect for a dinner table. So that TV box, it had almost every sauce of pizza on it after a while. Even when we threw it, we were sad for two days. You know, it had like a meaning for us. But... Um, here we are making ourselves a name. I convinced myself that I should be the only person I should have a CD. At that time, we never believed in music being leaked. If music leaked, your life is done. That's how we believed. So I'm the only one I'll keep the CD, guys. I got it, it's protected. I go down in my car. Remember, I told you I lived in this building, apartment 310. We suppress three and pray to God we make it into 310 alive. It was so dangerous, that building. So I go to my car, my window's broken. Canada, minus 40. You gotta make fast decisions. Holy shit, my car's broken. I run back upstairs to my apartment, call towing company, get my car fixed. A couple days later on, I pick up my car. I get in my car. You remember, guys, the CD faces? Remember those ones you put them in? Okay. See, technology is too fast now. We got iPad. Um, I put that. I put, I'm trying to play my CD. It's not in there. I make a U-turn. I go back to the dealership. Where's my fucking... Like, I'm not arguing with everyone. They're like, Who, what's wrong with this fucking guy? Then I realize they don't know what I'm talking about. Then I'm like... Did someone steal my car too? I said, you know, maybe I'm just being crazy. A couple of weeks go by, people call me, tell me. At that time, I was working with an artist named Masari. He's Lebanese, belly, of course, who convinced me to get in the music business. They're loving the songs. We're getting booked for shows. We thought the worst thing happened to our life became the best thing ever happened. Our music leaked everywhere. And that's how our music journey began. We said, we're leaving everything. We're leaving the hustle, the streets. Every I want to know everything about the music business. I'm ready for this. I saw it. That was like what I'm destined for. And um, going from selling mixtapes, boom, the incident that happened, leaving everything we had, you know, going to college at that time, trying to graduate. My mom told me, you got to have education. And I always wanted to get that just for mom. It wasn't for me, I promise. Um, here I am, we get our first record, start climbing the charts, and uh, I get a call from a guy by the name of Adrian Strong. He's like, hey, hello, I'm Adrian Strong. I work at radio, I'm from Toronto, Canada, da, da, da. I said, oh, what radio station you work at? And he said, no, 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 like I work radio stations. I was like, remember, we knew so little about the music business, okay? I, I, I grew up loving Bob Marley. I, I thought like getting your song on radio, all you have to do is call, yell, scream, or wait in the lobby and you get your song played. I don't know, you just bring someone on board to promote your songs. I was like, wow, this is amazing. At that moment, like I said, we learned everything. We started making our own change. We said no. And then, boom, our music empire started building. We became the first hip-hop independent label in Canada that really making it to the top of the charts. We were controlling top 40 radio in Canada. And Canada was very big on pop and, 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 and rock, but wasn't really in 2003, was our first biggest hit. We didn't have a scene like that. And um, trust me, being in air was even more special because, I mean, my whole life, like I told you, I was never invited from the front door, red carpet. I had to figure out. Like, I'm getting from the, in from the chimney, from the fucking window, from the basement. So I was ready for anything. I got to find a way. So my personality kept getting bigger and better. But I used everything I've learned on the streets and the struggle to really bring in the music. And thank God, people that were making all the music were just took things to a whole new level. 
So success was happening, but we thought we knew success till we meet Abel. Oh my Lord, professionally known as The Weeknd. Love you, bro. Please. I mean, sometimes, I think Abel's part was the hardest part. Everything else I said to you, I could have threw this away and just tell it to you. Abel's part, I had to do it so many times because I don't know how to introduce him sometimes. Um, he's a very special person. He changed our lives forever. EXO became the biggest brand and culture in our generation. I mean, he, he is what I call music. I'm a fan before all this. I, see, what, 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 what made it even more special working with Abel and being CEO of EXO is, is the story. Abel launched three mixtapes for free to the fans. He never went like, listen to my music, buy my music. No, he let the people digest it, love it, fall in love. And I started working with Abel early stages when he launched my favorite album, mixtape at that time, House of Balloons. I don't know how many people heard it, but if you didn't, you better listen to it. This is the best CD my, for me. So, so for me, standing here and telling a bit about Abel, I think is never enough, but the weekend went from being, uh, his first flight he took was to Coachella. Never left home. It's my favorite story, where I told you, remember 310, because, and we found that out about a couple years ago, me and him, we're, I'm, keep saying 310. He's like, why do I keep saying 310 for? I said, that's where 310, we started from. He's like, wow. And let me tell you what 310 is. For Abel, 310 was, the famous story where him and his best friend Lamar left home, left his mom's house, took his match and said, I'm gonna go proceed, fine, I wanna make music. Left downtown, tried to figure out life, and I was 310. Tell me we're not meant to meet, bro. See, for me, my clients are not a dollar sign, they're family to me. I got this letter that's framed right in my office where, you see so many times, Abel wrote me for my birthday, it says happy and happiness. To me, I framed that I put it in my office because that's what it means to me, is when I see my client appreciate those moments. Abel, I remember when I was going to my wedding, I thought you were fucking with me when you asked me that question, bro. <laughs> see, Abel told me one day, listen, promise me I'll never be a wedding singer. I said, that's it? Okay, I'm in, that's easy, wow. Of course. <laughs> and then here I am a couple days before I go to my wedding um, in Lebanon and we're talking and telling him how exciting and then he goes, you want me to sing at your wedding? I was like, hmm, is this guy like testing me? Testing our friendship? Like, <laughs> why do you ask me that? I was like, well, my honesty, I was like, of course, you know, but you told me you no know, wedding singer for you. So he goes, you're my brother. I sing for you. You're my bro. And obviously he came, he sang, we did our first dance and, and, I don't know what to tell you other than it was the most special day for me, for my family. I hope one day I can do the same for you wedding day. I won't sing, I promise you that. <laughs> but um, this is my, my story. I, I wanna keep highlighting those moments. I hope I keep touching you exactly right here in the heart because that topic we make our change is very important. My Jamaican brother right here, Lamar. Hey, Lamar, no way. I won't tell him about you running naked in the woods. No, we're gonna, you know. See, EXO started with a small idea, created the biggest brand globally. I'm so proud of him. Look at that. Just a bunch of young guys that had a dream, that had nothing. Or Amir Ismailian, my, my Persian brother, and he just started working for me in Ottawa and we started the record label to becoming one of the biggest manager culture. I mean, I don't know what to say to you sometimes, seeing moments like that, or my brother Manny, my Greek brother right there. What's up, bro? I'm gonna stop talking for a second. I wanna play you something. One thing I'm gonna play you today. I felt like this was the best day, best moment of my life. You must be wondering why they play this, right? I mean, you look so beautiful, baby. Every time I look at the video, man, you look so beautiful. Um, obviously, it was best day because 
day of my wedding, but I wanted to play you this because I wanted to show you a different image of being an Arab. You know, I, I want to live for that. I want to be... Thank you, thank you. Um, I want to show... I want to show a different image what the media show us. We love life. Anybody tells you no is bullshit. You know, you come to my house, you're not leaving unless you're going to eat for like three hours. <laughs> I might have to teach you the Depke dance. You're like, what is that? Just follow me. You know, that's what we do. We love life, you know. And my wedding, my, my wife is, grew up in a Muslim family. I'm Christian, like I told you earlier. We're from the opposite side of the country, and we both escaped the war. And uh, let me tell you, uh, our, our wedding caused a lot of death threats to a limit. I mean, we'll talk about even how many supporters we had and how many people loved that, because everybody wants to see change. We fought everything with love. To a limit, when I got back from the US after my wedding, we got an invitation from the Vatican to go meet the Pope and get his blessing. At first, obviously, I thought it was like bullshit, like who's this guy calling me? But then when I looked at him, it was real, and we went to, we met the Pope, and we got myself, my wife, and my daughter's blessing. I mean, things like this that kept making me believe what, what I ended up choosing today. We make our own change. And um, that night on the wedding, you see how we're dancing? My brother, French Montana, Karim Karbouche, Moroccan. Um, with us here today as well. We're on the dance floor dancing, as you see, we're crazy. We, people, Arabs, we love to dance and party and obviously wedding. My mom, we're on the dance floor. French is like, when are we going to work together? Da, da, da. And I said, let's do it. And then we launched together our first record, Unforgettable, which was literally, don't want to sound cheesy, but it was Unforgettable. And, and I'll tell you why. If, other than the fact that we did 2 billion sales and et cetera, no. I want to tell you, French found this video online with a bunch of kids dancing in the mud. Crazy, Miago find them. They're in Uganda. I said, French, we're going to Uganda, shoot, shoot the video there. He's like, well, no, bro. I was like, this is the concept. We're not going to Uganda. 12 shots later on, French is on the plane to Uganda. <laughs> and then we shot the video. He came back a different person. And he was like, yo, this changed my life. And that mission ended up us building this hospital for 300,000 people. Like when French was there, he saw how women were having birth under a tree. So he couldn't live with, with that. So being an immigrant myself and Abel came, joined us, and invested money in it, and friend, everybody, and we built this hospital. And I think that's the most proud thing I want to share with you today, like being an immigrant, to be able to help someone, wow. Then I joined, thank you, thank you. That deserves a clap. And then, and then, joined, and then joined the Global Citizen Board, and I just want to say, like, most important thing here, I just want to say thank you to you guys, because you believed in me, and I believed in you, and I'm here because of you, and... I don't even know what to say, so I love you guys. Um, what makes it very special, not two of us from the same kind, I promise you, they're not the same religion, not the same color, we're all different. But we made our own change. I hope that music will continue making our own change. Thank you to Jai. Jai, show them what you did. See, right here, Jai painted the story that I've been telling you the whole time. I want you to look at it. This is, and, and this cassette here, Queen, that song was on repeat, Bohemian Rhapsody and my Walkman when I escaped. I want you to continue using music to change your life. I heard there's about 300, 400 important people here tonight. Don't be scared to make your own change. You're powerful people. Make your own change. Thank you. My name is Sal. I tried to bring him back. That was a complete privilege to listen to that. Thank you.